In this example, we would like to start investigating this function, f of x equals a piecewise definition here, e to the minus 1 over x squared when x is not 0, and this is perfectly well defined as long as x is not 0, and um, it can be continued, so it can be made continuous by defining, so obviously when you plug in x equals 0 up here, there, there's no definition here, you can't define that. But if we define that point to be zero, it turns out that this function is continuous. And so it's an exercise for you to show that this is indeed continuous. So the limit as x approaches zero of this function, f of x, actually equals the function value, which in this case is zero. So you all should make sure that you can, that you can show that this limit is truly equal to zero. And because of this, right, then the function f is continuous. Now it turns out that f is more than continuous, it's stronger then continuous, this f is actually differentiable. Um, it turns out that it's infinitely differentiable at the point x equals zero, but we just wanna show that the first derivative is well-defined, makes sense here at x equals zero. So what I'm gonna do here in this video is compute the derivative of f at zero. Now the definition that I'm gonna use is the limit definition in terms of the slope. So f of x minus f of a over x minus a, that limit. Um, so for this function, it's going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x minus f of 0, that's the point that we're taking the derivative at, divided by x minus 0. And now we plug in, right? So remember that when you take a limit, x is never equal to the, the point where the limit is heading, right? And so here x is not 0, in other words. So we can replace the formula for f of x by the formula for f when x is not zero, because again, in the limit, we're never gonna get where we're headed, right? And so this is e to the minus one over x squared minus f of zero. Well, f of zero truly is zero, right? So that's zero. And then, of course, this is just x minus zero. And at this point, we can kind of simplify here, and we can write this as the limit. As x approaches zero, e to the minus one over x squared over x. And we want to try to compute this limit. So we can just start by just plugging in, right? We just said, you guys are going to show this, but we just said that the limit of this portion here as x approaches 0 is 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of x itself is 0. And so we see that this is an indeterminate form. All right, we studied these indeterminate form. We, we studied these back in Chapter 6 of, of our course. So at this point, you should be thinking, well, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, I'm going to save us a little bit of struggle here because it turns out that if you apply L'Hopital's rule to this as it is, you get stuck in kind of a quandary where it doesn't actually help you. So instead of just applying L'Hopital to this, what I'm going to do is take the kind of take the reciprocal here and kind of change this limit a little bit, okay, a little bit. So what am I going to do? Well, I see that this function has a negative sign in the exponent, so that portion of the function can be moved downstairs. But to keep everything working in terms of L'Hopital's rule, we have to also send this x upstairs. But when it goes up there, we have to make sure everything's equal. So it's going to become a 1 over x when it moves upstairs, right? And so this limit is then equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x over e to the positive 1 over x squared. And now we have to just make sure that the changes we made did not affect the indeterminate of the indeterminate form, right? And so we plug in, we take the limit. This limit, as the um, exponent becomes very large, this becomes close to infinity. Same thing here, right? And so the one-sided limits, one will be positive infinity, the other one will be minus, but plus or minus infinity over infinity. And this is enough, right, to say, okay, L'Hopital, L'Hopital's rule applies here, right? So L'Hopital's rule applies. So let's do it. Remember what L'Hopital's rule says. It says that we can take the limit of the ratios of the derivatives. So there's no quotient rule here. We just take the derivatives of the numerator and the denominator. In the denominator, we have a chain rule, right? The derivative of this term is going to be minus 2 over x cubed and then times e to the u, so 1 over x squared. And at this point, before we just start plugging in values and taking the limit, we can cancel, right? We can cancel. So what can we cancel? We can cancel the minus signs. I'm not sure if that's a big deal. But the other thing that we can do is take away two of these x's, right? And so we can write this then as the limit. As x approaches 0 of 1 over 2, uh, 2 over x e to the 1 over x squared. 
And this can then just, of course, be written. I could have just done this before, right? But at this point, I've done it this way. So this can be written as the limit as x approaches 0 of x over 2 e to the 1 over x squared. And now when we just plug into this limit, on top we get a 0. On the bottom we get 2 times infinity. So very small over very big, that's very small. Right? And so the limit exists in equals 0. This, by the way, was the derivative of our function at 0, right? That's, that's the reason we took this limit, because this is the difference quotient definition of derivative. And so what we have shown here is that our function f of x is differentiable. It's differentiable at x equals 0 or x naught equals 0. And we actually got more information from that, right? We also learned that f prime at x naught, which f prime at 0 in this case, is equal to 0. So we've got a value for it, right?